took off, can you actually get right on the top of it? Aye, we'll get right to the very, very top. Once we've made it to the peak, we'll see the whole of Egg, which now belongs to Scruff and the other islanders. Eleven years ago, they raised one and a half million pounds to buy it for themselves. That's uh, my house over there, Martin. Where, well, which the, one? The furthest away one. The roof blew away on two years ago. I think the gust was something like 122 mile an hour recorded that night. It's not all plain sailing in the no, winter. No, no, no. It's not all plain sailing in the summer either. The weather changes by the minute. Oh, it's certainly clearing up now. The time we get to the top, Martin, it'll be beautiful. Yeah, right. Do you think island people are different from mainland people? I think they're hardier. They're definitely more patient, you know, during the winter. God, you can really feel the wind yes. tumbling through here, can't you? Um, ah! <laughs> Ah, there's the top. Woo! It's easy to see why this beautiful but tough landscape captured the hearts of settlers like Scruff. I got a chance of this caravan, and I thought, oh, it'd be all right, just use it the weekends and stuff like that. And I came and I never went home. Really? No. I just sneaked up on me. The only thing I really, really, really missed was a good Glasgow curry. <laughs> and I still have cravings 19 years later for a Glasgow curry. <laughs> the island is still drawing people away from the city. Brothers Ben and Joe Cormack have returned to Egg after university to turn a ruined croft into their home. What was it that prompted your return? Because traditionally, you know, people your age leave islands, don't they? I think every kid or everyone from here appreciate where we're from, you know. Yeah, yeah. Beach, you know, mountains, locks and all that. Mm. But how's it work? None of you are none of you are builders and yet you're you're building this yourselves. There's a few guys that really know what they're doing. We've gone to them for advice. The stonework gets better the further the wall goes up though, because we you know we're crap when we started. <laughs> it gets better as it going up. As part of the island's scheme to encourage young settlers, the boys have been given a low-rent lease on this spectacular beachside plot. When you finish your house, how are you going to keep yourselves? I'm qualified as a graphic designer, and something at least I can do from here, from the laptop computer. Right. Uh, broadband moving in soon as well. OK. So it'll make uh, it possible to, to work from here. Do you think of yourselves as islanders? Do you feel like islanders? Yeah, I definitely feel part of the furniture, you know. This evening, Ben and Joe have invited me to one of the regular beach parties. Lucy Scott, who moved here four years ago, is another convert to island life. I mean, it's a fantastic, beautiful place, and it's full of amazing people. And, um, but there are loads of those. I know, but there's something special to do with the independence, resilience, tolerance. The other thing about islands, I think, is that islanders are outward looking. We're really used to people coming to here from all over the world and accepting them and... But do you, when they go, do you have a little sort of, hey, we're still here? <laughs> yeah. Do you? <laughs> Next morning, I want to see for myself how this isolated community works. On some evenings, the tea room doubles as a bar, providing a meeting place for the islanders. And the new pier means that twice a week supplies and posts can be brought from the mainland. Until last year, there was no mains electricity, so the islanders had to survive on generators. But they found a solution, turning the island's relentless wind into power. Hello, ladies. With so few people, everyone has several jobs to keep the community ticking over. One day, Scruff's a crofter. The next, he's a coast guard. Today, he's a fisherman. 
and I volunteered to be his crew. He's quite big. Ah, he's moved! <laughs> Sorry. That's, that, that's the wee brother of that one. Oh, is it? Oh, you don't right. want that one. Right. <laughs> oh, look what we've got here. Oh, look at that big fella. Ah, you have to take that out. I'm not taking that out. <laughs> It's facing you as well. He's it's looking all at me. <laughs> Look at those claws. There's a lobster for you, man. Watch your fingers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let go. Let go. That's it. Courage it. Oh, God. Whoa. Look, Look at that. that. Look at that beauty. <laughs> Woo! Hey, man, that's the crushing claw. Crushing? Yeah, he grabs things and just crushes it. And this one's the cutting claw. Now, he's, he's very sharp. And he'll just say, say your finger was to go in there, sort of like that, you know. Um, that's what that would do. That's not what you did to your fingers. No, no, it was that thing it did it. And what happened is my fingers went between there and the rope, and it just chopped them off. So you don't want to do that. No. That is droppy. They you. They go for you, don't they? Yeah, it's too weak. You can just run free. Do you like fishing? I love fishing. I you love it? I love it, yeah. Is there ever a point when you think, I'd be better off on the mainland or...? Never. Never? Nah. Sometimes it feels like that. We just put that one on top of these. What's the worst thing? Weather. To fight the weather, just keeping the boat. Fight the weather, try to make a living. It's just a constant battle against the weather. It's all right, you've only got another 450 to go. <laughs> You have to admire the ingenuity and doggedness of people like Scruff. This is hard living, but the residents do get help. Along with other remote islands around Britain, Egg is heavily subsidised by the mainland. I'm very pleased with Egg. Um, it's criticised a lot for taking a lot of grants, 1.6 for the electricity, I think it's about 8 million for this pier. But what you've got here is a, a unique, sort of handcrafted, custom-made community, unlike any other. And as a taxpayer, uh, I think that's worth preserving. As I leave, I'm struck by the extraordinary variety of ways of life on these islands. I've got one more to visit in the far north, and by all accounts, it's the most extraordinary island of the lot. Mm -hmm.